We begin today's recording by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we are on. I am on Burrawang land. Where are you, Breeza? I am on the land of the Jajarurung people. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are tuning in today. And wherever you're listening to the potty today, make sure you know whose land you're on. Join us each week for some booze-free banter about life without booze. If you're entertaining cutting back your booze by a day, a week, a month, or for the rest of your life, we would love for you to tune in. Buckle up and come along for a ride that may just change your life. Just a heads up, some of the conversations we have may be triggering. Reach out to your local support centre in Australia. That's Lifeline 131144. All right, let's crack again. What are you sucking back on today, Meso? Sangria. Oh, I better sangria. <laughs> <laughs> I have got Altina LeBlanc. Oh, La- Matt LeBlanc. La- Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> yeah. And we love Altina, don't we? They're so we- convenient in the cans. Yep, to stash and smuggle into all your places. And you know what they've given us? They have things. given us a dizzy code. BFB10 gets you 10% off altinadrinks.com. Yep, so www.altinadrinks.com. <laughs> that, that. <laughs> yeah, pop in BFB. And yep. 10% happy days, good times. Thank you, Altina. We love you. Meso. Breeza. <laughs> <laughs> up and about. Oh, up and about, up and about. Just, uh, just We're not going to bear in the bush. Who have we just spoken to, Meso? We have just spoken to Fiona O'Loughlin. My dear. Sh- Okay, I'm just going to tell you, if you're not across Fiona Lachlan for an international audience, I'm going to read the start of her book. She has a book. She has two books, actually, but this one is um, Truths from an Unreliable Witness, Finding Laughter in Dark Places. And I'm reading you the first little insert. Fiona Lachlan is Australian comedy royalty with an award-winning career of almost 20 years. Fiona performs to packed houses across the globe, from headlining the world-renowned Improv Comedy Club in LA to repeat sessions in Hong Kong and performing at the Edinburgh Fr- Festival Fringe, Montreal's Just for Laughs Comedy Festival, the UK's Leicester Comedy Festival, Adelaide Fringe and the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. As well as a critically acclaimed stand-up comedian, Fiona is an accomplished author publishing Me of the Never Never in 2011. She's also appeared on Celebrity Get Me Out of It, which she won. She's yes, Queen of the Jungle. Queen jungle. <laughs> and she's uh, been on Good News Week, Spicks and Specs, and Celebrity Apprentice, among many other television shows. And Fiona lives in Adelaide. And OMG. <laughs> wow, we. I think we might make this a two parter, Meso. I think, you're, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're spot on. Yep. Um, 100%. Yeah, like I, I said this to you after we spoke to Fiona. I was like, um, Mesa, I just feel so privileged that oh. Fiona has opened up to us about stuff that she hasn't talked about. And she said to us afterwards, she goes, I haven't yeah. spoken about this stuff before yeah. um, to, to media. Mm. She, uh, yeah, she just was so vulnerable and mm. raw. Um, and we felt it all, didn't we? we yeah, had, we went on a journey. Yeah, we had tears. All the colours. We had laughter. We just had it all. And oh. I, yeah, just blown I'm away. Just blown same, away by it. Same. Myself. Truly I am as well. I'm a bit starstruck and mind-blown and yeah. humbled and privileged and honoured, all of the things. She's a, she's dynamite, isn't she? What dynamite. a legend. Yeah, and yeah. Cha- changing lives. Her story will really change lives. Yeah. But before we bring her in for part A, mm. um, Fiona is touring. Yeah, she is. So, up. yeah. So the Melbourne show is called Nikki Boy and Queen Fee and it's the – is it the Lido? Lido, I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Lido Cinemas on December 7th at 7.30. Um, so it's thanks to Lido or Comedy. Sorry, I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. We also have Nikki Boy and Queen Fee doing a fundraiser in Wallaroo on the November 25th. Um, and there's more dates to come, but you can check them out on Fiona's website, which is www.fionao.com.au or head to her Facebook for more. You'll also find these details in our show notes. 
And we just want to mention a trigger warning. Yeah. Mason. Yep. There is conversations around suicide. Um, yeah. So if you want to skip um, halfway through the pod or give it a, give it a scrap altogether, we understand. But yeah, tread yeah. lightly, folks. Yeah. So here is a Fiona Lachlan part A of a two part chat with Fiona. Let's bring her in. A huge booze free band with buddies. Welcome to our very special guest, Fiona O'Loughlin. Oh, Welcome, hi, Fiona. Girls. Oh, thank you for joining us today, Fiona. We're so excited. Yes, uh, we can't we can't wait to unpack your story. We're going to throw you straight in the deep end with a confession session. So tell us something, your wildest story um, when you've been sozzled. Confession session. It's time to play. When you tell us what you're ashamed to say. Confession session. It's time to play. Spill the tea now that you're all free. So many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is too, um, I'll be forever grateful uh, to myself for the title of the book, Unreliable Women. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think what's interesting is that you have these, my, some of them aren't my recollections, but yet they are somebody else's, you know, biggest story and it did affect them. Meanwhile, I've gone on forgotten all about it. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I was in a country town in South Australia a couple of years ago, just gigging, and I was in the uh, news agent. And the guy said, Oh, Fiona, you're back in town. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't happen every day. I'm not particularly um, that well recognized. I'm very short. And I don't think, I go under the radar a lot. Uh, I forget. More than I don't, that people may know. I, I totally forget about that, that I might be known or recognised. <laughs> he said, oh, Gary will be pleased to. I'm like, oh, who the fuck is Gary? <laughs> and I'm just smiling and he said, yeah, you remember what happened last time? I have no clue. Uh, and what happened, you know, apparently um, I... You know, stayed on in the town a day or two. I was too drunk to. And it, Gary, whoever Gary is, God bless Gary, uh, drove me all the way to the capital, you know, to the nearest um, capital, which was Adelaide, uh, to catch my next flight on to my next disaster. But it was the biggest thing that happened in Gary's bloody, you know, months. But it, I had not. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Gary's I wonder the how many are out there. <laughs> yes. You've made Gary's life, but little does he know you just have no. Gary still talks about that day. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, gosh, I love other, you know, it's only, it takes one to know one. And the, the dark humour, you guys would be across this, you know. Yeah. It is, there's, you know, a lot of it is not hand-wringing, you know. It's very joyful. Um <laughs> to be romping through recovery. <laughs> i at the other end, should I say. But um, uh, I was at an AA meeting, um, oh, this is going back two or three years in Melbourne, and this, we were waiting out the front, you know, having a CD and before the meeting started, and this fella came up to me and said, Oh, you don't remember me. You're in a pretty bad way when I saw you. Like, I just go straight to, oh, my God, oh, thank you. So he said, yeah, I put you in a cab and I I gave you a toothbrush, if you remember, and $50. I, you know, he could have said, and I put you in the camel in the cab, you know, and I would be surprised. And uh, anyway, I just went into, I, I, I didn't even, I never go on the defence ever. You know, I said, oh, my God, I don't remember. I'm so sorry. He said, I'm kidding. I've never met you before. Oh, oh. <laughs> Played the bluff on you. Yeah. And oh, I so got you in, got stuff. you in. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Well played. But it's in, there was a story I wrote about in the book, and that was probably one of the most obscure and weird, uh, but it, it, it spoke to the immediacy of being uh, dependent on, uh, well, eth ethanol, really. I, I needed that drug in me because my body was going into withdrawal. So it became, it, 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 you know, what, I, what I love, I could talk about this forever, but there's so many different aspects to, 
you know, uh, to the disease. But this is one that's purely physical. Yeah. And I had to, this particular day, anyone who's read the, my book, it was an old woman, <laughs> an older woman's house uh, in a country town. I was desperate, desperate to get medicine into me. And my medicine, unfortunately, was alcohol. And, and uh, I was going to vomit or shit myself. But sorry to be so, but that's the, that's the brutal reality of alcohol mm. uh, or alcoholism um, is that to, to, the withdrawal, the physical withdrawal is uh, horrendous. And how, how many times have you experienced that, Fiona? Only 419. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not many. <laughs> oh, isn't it oh. incredible that you know what you're going to be going through, but you ha- like you just mm. you have no control over that. It's such, it has such a grip the disease. Mm. Yeah, it's the definition of madness, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> But it's doing the same thing over and over again. And expecting, expecting a different result. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. there is always that golden moment, as wrong as this sounds to say, but that golden solution. I used to, I used to visualise it as, you know, my syrup, my magic syrup, you know, oh. where, you know, you get it into you. Yeah, right. And then there's that brief uh abating or stay of execution, really, it's very dramatic, uh, where you are momentarily uh, kind of suspended from your own self-loathing. Wow. Wow. Free of you for what a price you pay for that, though. Yeah. Yeah, big price. But, but I had no alternative, and that's what we don't have alternatives to. I mean, I know there's alternatives, but in an alcoholic mind, in a um, in the middle of active addiction, inside active addiction, mm. that's the solution. The only one we've got. We can't even imagine how difficult that must be in your mind and in addicts' minds. So yeah, and we'll look forward to unpacking this a bit more as we go along today, Fiona. Thank you for sharing that. And I guess yeah, we share that confession session to highlight the the silly things that we've done, what alcohol does to our brains, don't we? So well, congratulations. Where are you at with sobriety and and how long have you been sober for now? And like I still think, I don't know, like We've spoken about a lot on the podcast. I've had a couple of goes at at sobriety over sort of 10 years. I don't think anyone actually, I don't know, hands up in the air if anyone's been able to just give up the drink straight away and never drink again. I think everyone sort of dips their toe back, you know, after a little bit of time. And I think people put a lot of shame on themselves if they don't get it right the first time. But tell us, where are you at now? How long have you been sober for? Uh, 2019, December 17th. That's your last drink. Well done. Yeah. Amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> so you did, the pa- you did the pandemic sober, Fiona. Yes, I did. That's and a double. Well, it, you see, I had been, um, I'd been relapsing for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a very, very long time. Mm. It's been a very long time since I've sat in a public place and had a drink, you know. Mm. So it'd be over, it'd be coming up 20 years, I think. Do you, feel, do you feel like that relapsing, you become addicted to that chaos? I wonder, yeah. I think so. It's mm. I don't even know yet what I was up to 100%. <laughs> because um, a lot, sorry, that's my alarm. I hate it. It's, it's nice, quite nice little chime in the background. I only, listen, only heard it when you said it, though. <laughs> so that's fine. Hey, what about this? This is jumping. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she's she, she's gone to turn her alarm off. <laughs> we, get, we get to admire her beauty. So Fiona set know. up is a beautiful chair. It's, oh, it's a like a throne. Stunning. Yeah, it's like a throne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With some flowers and a beautiful – oh, it's a stunning setup. I'm so it's jealous. Set up. Yeah. She's really – it's gorgeous. Okay. Uh, what were we talking about? Um, <laughs> we're talking Re- about relapsing? relapsing or how long you've or, been sober for. Oh, I yes, think this yes. is the first question, 2019. Yeah. Now, because when you are, you see, we're in charge of this big job. We're the, we're the addicts, you know, and yet we write the kind of, um, you know, we, we, we're, the, we're the first ones in, you know, experiencing this. 
And yet, so what I'm trying to say is I think, well, I know, but I didn't know it at the time, that it was very wrong of me um, to, to program myself and my family to react to my relapses with disappointment and anger. Ah. That was the drill. I never sat anybody down and said, right, when I get pissed. <laughs> but I really think that that was, uh, uh, I was very, very hard on myself in that sense because yeah, right. what I know now, and I know it like I know I'm sitting here talking to you girls, you know, um, that the first response in in the um, gosh, you know, in the, in the catastrophe and the, and the heartache of any alcoholic and a relapse um, is love. Wow. Yeah. What you is must it? The meet it with love. The opposite, yes. opposite of addiction is connection. Mm. And, and that doesn't mean um, th that you become a codependent or a, an enabler. There's a very different. My poor kids, you know, I just feel sad for all of us. Mm. That we had to go through this stupid pantomime mm. of it's bad enough. You feel so bad and wicked and, and disappointed and all of that. But then, it, to me, the, the, because no one can understand but us. Mm. That, and I don't mean to say that you know, oh, mother, you don't know what it's like. <laughs> it just happens to me. <laughs> one of the um, there's a type of humans that makes up the one in ten of us that forever and ever more uh, alcohol will be ruinous to. Yeah. Drinkers, I mean, will mm. always, it's always been about the same stats. Yeah. So it always be the same, in uh, same shit, different bucket in a sense. Yeah. But, um, I talked for too long and forgot. I forgot to leave breadcrumbs. <laughs> no, and then it beautifully. Yeah, oh, and I think oh, alcohol, oh. alcohol doesn't discriminate. Smart, no. intelligent people oh, that's right. become addicts. <clears throat> so, if if anyone out there can relate to that that first day uh, or the first morning of, oh God, it's happened again. You know, for me, towards the, I would always be in hospital. Wow. Yeah, and and that crushing realization of it's happened, it's real. I'm mm. and you're trapped in yourself. Yeah, you did this. You yeah. can't get away from you. Yeah, that self loathing. And, and then people lining up to be cross with you as well. Yeah, oh. and just said, "Well, you need to all get in line because I get to go first. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my job. I've got the yeah. I've got the biggest stick to beat myself with. Yeah, yes. So, but even after we go through that, then it's, it's it's almost like this. As I said, a pantomime where then we must, of course, be be. It's, it feels like you know our spirit. We're taken out of the bed and taken to the public town square where everybody can tell us how revolting we are, you know. Oh, yeah. God, that, and being in the public eye as well, like that's yeah. just next yeah, level. Yeah, it's another layer. Imagine. Yeah. One one of our, um, actually a friend of ours, uh, Fiona, she, her husband um, was an alcoholic and she just supported him. And she said on our podcast, she supported him with unconditional love. Mm. Every time he'd have a relapse, she'd be there for him. Like as excruciating as it was for her, she just knew that that's how, that's what would get him through is that unconditional love. and Compassion. Yeah, and yeah. compassion and all that. And yep. bloody hard, bloody wow. hard. But how did she know that? She, you know what? I, I asked the same question, Fiona, but, yeah, and I'll tell you a story off air. Um, but, yeah, um, not to do it. It's a personal story of mine, but I asked exactly the same question. Like she yeah. hit rock bottom, she hit rock bottom with him because, I, I mean. Think, I think that she, I don't know this person, but obviously that she truly loves him. Yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary humans. 100%. Yeah. Um, so tell us, Fiona, so December 17th, 2019, was there anything in particular that led you up to that decision or was there any event that happened that, then was like, right, line in the sand, that's it. Because I know often we speak to people and they, they say they had one big, you know, bender and they woke up and they said, that's enough. Was there something that led you to that choice 
on the 18th of December or 17th of December? Was that your last drink or was that the day? It would have been the last um, because I know I, I know that we you know that date's there, but I think that would be the last day because I know I didn't end up in hospital that time, uh, and I uh, kind of did a home uh, home brew <laughs> detox, as in, so I didn't have Valium. Yeah. So I, I brought down the amount of alcohol over a period of five days to. You know, because I, 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 when I relapsed, you know, I didn't muck around. And yeah, hard. I, I was filming, actually, that uh, show, um, The Full Monty. Mm-hmm. Oh. It was during that, uh, not on air, but it was privately towards the end of filming that that I'd relapsed and at the time had a friend uh who was working very closely with me, and yeah, and that's a that's a um, a tricky thing to have because she had to, you know, she had to trust me, but yeah. that I I wasn't you know using her to kind of to get my you know fix. I said, look, I'm going to. It's very serious to go cold turkey too after mm, yeah. after you've been on a bender for a week or. Whatever. It can kill, kill you, can't it? Absolutely. Like it actually can kill you, yeah. So uh, I just know that the tapering off, it, it was the last, I don't know how amount, what the amount was at the end, but that it was the, that was the date of that tapering, yeah. So what was the question, though? No, why did I? Well, I knew that to, I think of it a bit like a skin graft. You just, Eventually one will tape. Ah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I like that analogy. I like yeah, that analogy. same. That's what I say to people now that I know better, you know, um, and I'm on the, I feel like now I'm on safe ground, you know, mm, mm. and and our job is the ones that got safely this side, <laughs> we just hold on to each other and help pull the next yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, you know? Love that. Love well, that. It's, you know, it's the only way forward is to understand and, and, and to people who don't get it, good mm. luck to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interested to know, if Fiona, what led you to that relapse? Like why did you pick up a drink when you had Same it? as always. Yeah. Um, the, the, the grief and the weight of the trauma, of the guilt of everything I'd caused everyone, including myself, uh, I, I desperately needed release from that. Mm. And, and I was very alone at the time too. You know, I did not have... Uh, it's it's a bit tricky getting sober when you're uh, from a culture. It seems to be. I've learned a lot about where that shame and stigma is, and I. I've got to say, it, it's been really quite distressing. It's another thing I've had to go. Oh no! Oh fuck that. Because I never knew where the shame and stigma actually was. Wow. Like, we hear about it all the time. I'm not, but you see, I've never, ever been uh, really uh, hurt by other people online, ever. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't get trolled. Um, I, I can't say I've ever really suffered much from the stigma and the shaming until I. Uh, well, I'm like, where is it? And unfortunately, it's in our living room. Hmm. Yeah. It's, home. it's at home. Mm. In our own, you know, so it's in our own inner circle. Yeah. With your book, Fiona, you talked about, and we give that a little shout out if you haven't already got your little hot little hands on it. I love the name. <laughs> How good. <It's> good <laughs> did you come up with that? Of course you did. So tr- it's called Truths from an Unreliable Witness. So it's an incredibly, and you've got your copy there too yeah. as well. Um, it is an incredibly raw and honest storytelling. Um, and for those, you actually spoke about it. You actually touched on it before when you um, rolled into the elderly lady's house. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that blew my mind um, and I'll also just preface with a trigger warning too because the conversation we're probably about to dive into is suicide attempts. Um, so if you're not comfortable with this next questioning, please 
perhaps skip it. Tell us how bad did it get, Fiona? How bad did things get? Oh, I did, you did. Tell that story of going through the ladies' house and the ones um, at the hotels. Yeah, so I was, uh, I'd had another disaster at a gig, a South Australian uh, gig in a country town. Yeah, again. I don't know. I, I don't know what a- actual event led to that relapse. I, I can't remember. They all blended. I remember. One, don't they? I was so embarrassed the next morning. I'm. Oh my god. I was with a girl that, like a girl, it was with people, good people who, who pick you up and take you home like a wounded bird. Uh, so I'd made a fool of myself again doing a show that I believe I could do and get away with, as I had done many times, uh, with booze in me. But, you know, uh, I reckon I can pull this off. Uh, dun, dun, no. <laughs> a little bit drunker than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I wake up the next morning and I'm in a <clears throat> house with two girls I went to boarding school with. Uh, you know, people make arrangements for you. Thank God they were there. But, you know, I, I was embarrassed and ashamed. And the next morning, oh, I'd also raided um, Angela's house. She's a winemaker, so. That's handy. Oh, oh ripper. <laughs> take your, and I hate red wine. I always did. I've never liked wine. I never liked the taste of any alcohol. I only ever used it for a family. Uh, yeah. um, but I, I, I found a bottle of red wine. I took that, to, you know, back to bed with me. and. So, you've, again, it's another stay of execution, you know, I've got this and this will, you know, protect my mind from myself, you know, for, mm. for a while. But then my sister came to pick me up. So you've got to think of it from their, you know, perspective. And she's not happy. She's embarrassed too, I think. Well, I can't say what she was, but uh, she she was a friend of you know, their family friends. She knew the woman. I was anyway. She was not happy, Jan, in the car on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on the way back to yeah. You know, it, it was about two three hours drive back to Adelaide, mm. and the DT start happening mm. on the, in the car in her car, uh, and the trembling and you you know you will either uh, vomit. Or unfortunately, the other uh, other end, and it's it's, it's so um, it's it's uh, what I can't think of the word, um, but it's so physically awful, like yeah. it's absolutely awful. Physical trauma. Uh, and these, you know, so I've got to stop this. So I'm looking around. You know, we're looking like like a junkie, really. It's not much different. I mean, it is. The same thing. Where's my drive? I've got to get it. Um, and we're going through towns after, you know, country towns. I'm just looking for any opportunity to get to a hotel. Well, you know, so obviously you need to go to the toilet, don't you? They can't stop you from that. And anyway, so I saw a hotel. I said, yeah, I've got to stop. We've, I've got to go. To she was not stupid, but I was quicker. And... <laughs> Race to the hotel, my plan was God knows what, but, I, you know, I should just get to the hotel and that would you know, work it out from there. That's how desperate we are. The hotel was boarded up and shut, so, oh, my God, oh. I just kept running down a street and uh, the my fairy godmother of alcoholism, very bad, that fairy godmother, she, she must have led me <laughs> knocked on the door. Old woman answered. I said, I'm so sorry, and I think I was about to be sick. Um I said I I needed a bathroom. I've got I, I've I'm on a road trip. Anyway, I don't know what. She was a lovely old lady, and she let me in. And I was casing the joint. Oh, and my medicine, which sounds insane. Okay, well, lo and behold, she's so lovely, and she says, "Oh, here's the bathroom." And um, I'm never. It was like an oasis. It was a cabinet <laughs> right next to the bathroom in almost. <laughs> Like a little, and it was just made for an alcoholic, really, on her way to. <laughs> the universe is looking out for you, or not so much, <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just trying to get as much in, you know, just to get me. Uh, oh, and also then you've got, to, you've got to be very careful not to vomit and waste it. Oh, oh yeah. Square one. Yep. Anyway, years later, and then finally, I can't remember what happened, but I think my sister ended up 
it's only a small town. And next thing, she's in the living room and I'm looking a lot perkier. She must have wanted to deck me because I'm sitting in the living room chatting away to the lovely old lady. I'm starting to feel better too uh, because it's doing its job. And uh, Anyway, next thing, we're in the car and we're heading off again and she must have thought, what the hell did she manage that? So I'm back on the road with her and I've got about half a bottle of whiskey, I think, something in me. Yeah. But what happened was after the book came out, oh, I love this story to death, because um, what happened was the woman who, the old woman who I've just, you know, kind of collided my story and her story collided that day forevermore, you see, she had the beginnings of dementia oh. and much-loved mother of people my age, you know. Yeah. And her, she's been telling the story for as long as I've been telling the story, but no one's been listening to her. She said, that, that girl from the television came here. And, oh. uh, Which sounds unbelievable. <laughs> the story sounds unbelievable. Absolutely. And her children would just say, yes, I'm sure she did. Oh. And, oh. and then when the book came out and somebody read it, and said, oh, my, I think mum was telling the truth. Oh. You know? Bless. And so we did a Zoom like this with her uh, family and we had such a laugh about it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Same. Do we need to give her a shout out? Absolutely. <laughs> She's still alive. She is in a nursing home, but her family and I, you know, my head, that's uh, one thing that I'll never know, you know, if because uh, I'm coming up for 60 and it, I do have frontal lobe checks, you know, but I do have a bit of damage and I'll never know how much mm. it's got to do with, uh, you know, the coma or the 15 years of, you know, on and off blackout drinking, whatever. But yeah. so I've got my hand on the dial, so it's up to me really, isn't it? Yeah. You've got control. Yeah. How bad it gets. Yeah. I might decide to be quiet off the air. Oh. <laughs> but how bad – so that was the story um, in the country town. Did you want to talk about the suicide attempts, how bad things got and the coma? Like that was pretty savage. I um, – absolutely. I believe that ha- – I, I never believed this, this – I, I never took to this kind of um, uh, sense or making sense or reasoning. I don't believe – I never believed in fate. But I think I've got to rethink all of that because I think I wasn't supposed to die. Mm-hmm. And now I've got to think, well, why? Mm-hmm. And it makes yeah. pretty perfect sense to me that, I, I you know, I, I'm being asked by something I can't put my finger on mm-hmm. uh, to help. And I'm happy to do so. It's our responsibility. Love that. Yeah. yeah a second shot, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So I took it as far as it can go and I... I I had two to three suicide attempts. As I said, the truth's from an unreliable witness, but I do remember being deadly serious, um, only I didn't know, unfortunately, the Valium won't kill you. <laughs> but, Ugh, didn't read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Having, having taken it as far as you can take it, mm-hmm. I do know, like I know, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow, that had I died, it would have been, uh, I died of shame. Shit. That's what we die of. Yeah. Oof. So that's why I'm so, I will not be quiet about talking about where the shame and stigma lives Mm. because you then only have to take it to its next conclusion. And I know this is, uh, these are fighting words, but you want to be very careful if you're the loved one of of an alcoholic in recovery. Um, that you're not party to what I think is um is manslaughter. Do you know, Fiona? I actually had a question I wanted to ask. I was going to ask it at the end, but because why? Sorry to interrupt. No. How dare you? Why must we die? Mm. 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 See, now I'm supposed to be quiet mm. and be grateful and and be shamed still. No. Not- I'm sorry. No. And it's just a it question of. You bore people. I'm so sorry that you're bored. Um, you bored and ignorant. 
I think. But it's a disease. And if yeah. you don't get it, I, uh, good luck to you. Yeah. You haven't been, it doesn't, it Affected. hasn't happened to you yet. Yeah, yeah. or a loved one. Or yeah. a loved one. Exactly. Yeah. When I say you, I mean, you know, be touched by it. Because it's every everybody in the family is hurt. Yeah. Well, it's not a sexy disease, is it? No. it's You know, do you know what I mean? It's kind of, it does place that stigma. And this is the question I want to ask. Can you tell us as a, how do we break down this stigma? How can we care for you as a public? How can we, what can we teach the public about this? How, what are things that we can ask or say or do or avoid to care for, for alcoholics or people with addictions in your experience? Um. Yeah, to become informed and ask us a question. Yes, that's so yes, good. Love that's that. great advice. No, yeah. We're not a green eyed monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel sometimes that I don't even have the right, sometimes, more than sometimes, to be given authority over my own narrative. Mm. They know more. Yeah, I've had people who are very, very close to me who will look in, into my face and tell me I'm wrong Oof. about oh. the facts of my own life. Mm. Gee, that's hard to take, isn't it? Yeah, very everyone's, hard everyone's an expert. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Now, I, as I said, I've had a dream run in many ways and I think it takes about five years. Well, I, don't, I didn't come up with that myself. It, it apparently does take about five years for an alcoholic to be trusted, again, in their workplace. Is that right? Is that wow. right? I haven't heard that, like, stat. And before. I don't find that particularly <laughs> offensive, you yeah. know. It's five years. I'll do five years happily. I'm alive. I oh, happy days, you know. But uh, don't use me, anyone, uh, as... You know, I've, I've had someone, people say things to you that they have no idea what they're telling me, what they've revealed. In I had a friend recently, a work colleague, who said to me, uh, you know, away from my, I'm in a work environment, okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, if you're still drinking, that's fine with me. Oh. <laughs> Shit. So, Une uneducated. Oh, God. But they, they don't look uneducated. They don't sound uneducated. Mm. They bloody are. Yeah. How do you respond to that, Fiona? Do you just let it go or do you, is that an opportunity for you to, to talk about and, you know, talk about it and get a message out there or do you just like? Off, no, it depends. It depends so much on most people already have decided what they know. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a – so frustrating to me. So ignorant. Because I don't know enough. Yeah. Mm. And it nearly killed me, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I spend two hours a day on YouTube trying to know more. And YouTube to me is the um, – gosh, I, I got well on YouTube. <laughs> oh, do you that? deep dive into addiction? Is that what you're looking at, Fiona? You can find out anything. The greatest teachers in the world are on YouTube. You know, yeah. I, I, I've I've sat in on Harvard lectures of all sorts of um, opinions, and but but when I became very interested in Gabor Maté, who is a leading light uh, psychologist and doctor, and um, he says we've got to. Stop saying, you know, why, where, the, where, we don't say where, the, I can't remember, but his answer is where does it hurt, where is the pain? Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Nice is that. Another one, actually, I just started, I haven't started reading it yet, but Johan Hari, have you, have you looked at yeah. much of his stuff? Johan Hari. Johan Hari, yeah. If I knew his face, I, what does he look like? Oh, I don't actually know. I've only listened to podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's so it, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I must write that down because I can't get enough. And for a long time I thought, see, I've, I put myself in my own rehab at home yeah. uh, in 2019. Um, yeah. Nobody knew I was doing it. It was wonderful um, because it, I still went about my business, but I 
it changed things, uh, made changes that were kind of subtle, but, but but I needed to be safe, you know. So I thought, well, if no one else can do it, I'll do it. Uh, wow, that's huge. And I created um, my own rehab, yeah. So because I'd been to hardcore rehab, you know, I'd been to me. There's nothing I hadn't tried, you know. Uh, I could make one of these at home. <laughs> <laughs> DIY. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably felt like you had all the tools in the tool belt that you needed after yeah. all those years of practice. Mm. Mm. Well, thank. I, I go back to YouTube. Yeah, uh, humans, we have all the tools we need, but mm. for some reason, and this will pass for sure. We'll get there because that's what humans do, mm. and what, that's what humans have always done. We get better. We learn. We improve. So I, this isn't going to be, it might be forever in my lifetime, maybe, yeah. uh, but it's got to stop uh, this shaming. Of, because here's the thing, I've, uh, this, this is what people don't understand, and I'll be as, um, I don't think they'll be listening to this anyway. Um, uh, but, okay, so I've still got very close relatives who are still very angry with me, okay? Now, when I try to say, can we talk about this? Like, can we get past, you know, we're, we're, we're just never going to talk again. What are we going to do, you know? Now, they will pick up something that I say is not theirs to pick up, to shame me with, uh, in their, it, they, because, so I was once, this is just another disaster, okay, but I'm in a pub and I'm pissed and someone caring enough uh, knows people who know me and they ring the people who know me. It's, like, well, it's my sister, okay? They ring my sister or her husband and they say, I think your sister's down at the whatever pub and I think she's, you know, I was pissed. And I'm, um, I, I probably, I, you know, when a drunk, I used to, uh, the, my goal when I was in the middle of active addiction on this particular night is to get more booze. That's, you know, that's what a drunk does. Dogs bark, you know. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the booze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'm being very entertaining <laughs> in the pub, and I probably was for the first 10 minutes. Yeah, now, yeah. Four hours later, they've got their lives to get back to. So I was <laughs> kind enough to ring my brother-in-law and sister uh, and say, uh, anyway, so my brother-in-law comes to collect me and then takes me to um, – a hotel where I was staying, uh, and it was pretty grim, pretty grim looking hotel too. Perfect for the movie, if there ever is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, because it was his school friends, you see. Oh. Uh, and so he takes me to the hotel. Uh, I don't remember what was said. We'd never had a problem, his brother in law and I. Uh, mm. Anyway, I never forget. He. He left me ten dollars, uh, and all these years later, I don't know whether it's her or another sister. She had to go and get you from that hotel where you were drunk. I'm like, hmm? that is that is an anecdote there that you just that is actually my shame. You're just you're telling a story about my shame there. And I am sorry about it, you know. But his his participation in that story is that of a good Samaritan. He chose mm. to answer the call of a you know really didn't have much to do with me at that point. <laughs> you know, what I mean? why are you picking that up as a weapon to hit me with? Mm, and how yes. how is that something? That I have to feel, you know, I've got enough guilt and shame. Mm. Can't you have that? Yeah. Or deal with it. How is that helpful for you? It is like, yeah. or, you know, because I'm okay now, but what if I wasn't? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. How is that helpful for you when you're already beating mm. yourself with that stick? What 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 can you do for that? But besides apologising, yeah, sorry, got blind, carried on a bit, 
like how is them still having a crack at you going to be helpful? You can't change a situation. Yeah, yeah. it's happened. What about tune in and just go, yeah, can I get you some Maccas on the way home or something? <laughs> like, I don't know, it's not helpful. Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. Like Compassion. forgiveness is, yep, it's massive. Yeah, totally. People forget that. I'm so that. sorry. That's shit. Isn't that's, it shit? That's, that's social so vanity. Shit. That's a social vanity, isn't it? You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like, um, and I'm not pigeonholing your relatives, but I feel like those type of people will go and tell other people about yeah. it. Without a doubt. Yeah, and make yeah. themselves like, oh, I had to go and get her. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. Puff their chest out. And I think people don't uh, be very careful. We have to be very mindful too that um, when people people's actual um, Oh gosh, what's the word? Their, their, their identity can be very tied up in being the best friend or the friend hmm. of the fuck up. Yeah. 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 And then does that give them sort of status? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Social and when, status. And then when the fuck up's not fucking up anymore. Yeah. The, they drop oh, down. The there's a, there's a fox in the chook pen. It did all gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I looked at it like that. But you're so yeah. right, Fiona. Yeah. Oh, they, it, they thrive on that drama. Yes, yeah, so they're someone else's to, drama. Yeah, and 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 because I was once an active alcoholic, does not wipe out uh, my my ability to recall and and now kind of. Put, you know, put some, oh, aha, moments in here. Well, it's your side of the story too now. Exactly. Like you're getting that opportunity. All right, everybody. Eric here, your friendly neighborhood podcast producer. I hope you enjoyed this episode, but guess what? This is part one of a two-part episode, so make sure you hang in there. Stay tuned for next week to continue this amazing story that you guys are listening to for episode 53. There's lots more great stuff to learn about and to listen to, and it's good. Hang in there. This podcast is proudly produced by our audio engineer, music extraordinaire, Eric Ladd. We love you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs>